we've got a few more molecular structures to name. So let's look at this first one right here. So the first thing you always want to do is identify the longest chain. So if we start over here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 carbons. Looks pretty long. Now what if we start over here? This looks like it could also be a long chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have two different chains, depending on whether, whether we want to go up here or whether we go over here, that have a length of 13. So you're, you're probably asking, which chain do you choose? And you should always, if we have two chains of equal length, and they're the longest chains, you pick the one that will have more uh, branches or more alkyl groups on it. So this group right here, if we pick this kind of from here to here as our chain, we only have one group on it, that group up there. If we pick this chain, starting over here and then going to over here, we have two groups on it. We would have this group over here, and then we would have, and then we would have this group, this group over here. So this is the better chain to use, because it has more groups on it. It has more groups, but the groups are smaller and simpler. So let's start counting. And the direction we want to count, we always want to start on the side of the chain where we're going to encounter something first. And everything is closer to this end of the chain, so we'll start counting here. We'll start counting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have 13 carbons on our main chain. Let me draw our main chain. So our main chain is this thing in orange. I'm drawing right here. That is our main chain. It's like that. 13, that's 3 and 10. The prefix is tridec, and it's tridecane, because we have all single bonds here. So it is tridecane. Tri Decane is the main chain. And then we have two groups over here. This one in green, this only has one carbon branching off of the main chain. So its prefix will be meth, but it'll be a methyl group. So that is methyl. That is a methyl group right there. And then this one down here, we have one, two, three carbons. The prefix is prop. So this is a propyl group. This is a propyl group. Pro pill group. And this is the methyl is sitting on the three carbon. The methyl is sitting on the three carbon of our main chain. And the propyl group is sitting on the four carbon. One, two, three, four. Now, when we figure out what order to list them in, when we actually write out the name, M, we just do it in alphabetical order, M comes before P. So we write three methyl before four propyl. So the entire compound here is or the entire molecule is 3-3-methyl, three, 3-methyl, three 4-propyl, four 4-propyl, four tridecane. 4-propyl tridecane, tridecane. And this is actually all going to be one word. If you don't you use dashes to separate when you have numbers, but if you have a word followed by a word, it just becomes purple tridecane. So 3-methyl, 4-propyl tridecane, and we're done. Well, let's do this one down here. Now, this one seems a little bit more complex. So the first thing to see is what is the largest chain or the largest ring that we have in our structure. And the two candidates, we have this chain over here. This has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons. Now let's see how many carbons our ring has. Our ring, our ring has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbons. So the ring is the largest, I guess you could say, core structure in this molecule. So that will be our that will that will be our core structure. And so we have nine carbons. Let me highlight it. So the ring, the ring is this right here. Has nine carbons. The prefix for nine is non. It's all single bonds, so it's nonane. And it is in a cycle. It's a ring, so it's cyclonanane. So this part right here. That part right there is cyclonanane. Cyclonanane. And then we have several things that branch off of the cyclonanane. So let's look at them one at a time. And then we'll think about how we're going to number them on the ring. So we looked already at this 
at this chain that has seven carbons. One, two, three, four. Let me do that in other blue. I like the other blue better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is a heptyl group. Heptyl group. Now this over here, let's see what we're dealing with. We have one, two, three carbons. So that is just a standard propyl group. So this is just a standard propyl group. And then here, here we have, we have one, two, three, four carbons. So we could say this is a butyl group, but this isn't just any butyl group. If we use the common naming, the carbon we immediately touch on, or that we immediately get to when we go off of our main ring, that branches off into three other carbons. So this is tert, tert for three. So this is, and the tert is usually written in italics. It's hard to differentiate that when you see it. When you see it, I'll write it in, uh, I'll write it in cursive. Tert. This is tert. This is a tert butyl group. Now the next question is, how do we specify where these different groups sit on this main ring? Now, if you just had one, if you had just had one group, you wouldn't have to specify. But when you have more than one, what you actually do is you figure out which one would be alphabetically first, and that would be number one. Now we have an H in heptyl, a P in propyl, and in tert butyl, you might say, well, do I use the T or do I use the B? And this is just the convention. You use the B. If you have sec butyl or tert butyl, you ignore the, tet, the sec or the tert. If this was an isobutyl or an isopropyl, you actually would use the I. So it's a little bit, you, I guess the best way to think about it is there's a dash here, so you can kind of ignore it. But if this was isobutyl, it would all be one word. So you would consider the I. So in this situation, we would consider the B. And B comes before P or an H, so that is where we will start numbering 1. And then to figure out which direction to keep numbering in, we just go in the direction where we're likely to encounter the first, or where we will encounter the first chain, the, the first side chain. So we'll go in this direction, because we get right to the propyl group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this compound, we're going to start with the alphabetically first side chain. So it's one tert butyl. It's one tert. Let me write that in cursive. Let me get some more space here. So it is one, I'll write this in cursive, tert, tert butyl. One tert butyl. Then the next one alphabetically is the heptyl group. That's H for heptyl. So then it is five heptyl, five heptyl. And then we have the propyl. And then it is 2 propyl, 2 propyl, 2 propyl. And then finally, cyclonanane. 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 And we're done.